Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant dog Pragmos is going to go through metabolism for your GCSE body. Now, this is a small world and it's a throwaway statement in the specification, but this is a massive, massive topic because it encompasses all of the processes that go on in your body. Metabolism. An organism's metabolism is all of the chemical reactions that are occurring in the body. We can say it's the sum of all the chemical reactions in the body. The chemical reactions in your body are all controlled by enzymes and they involve either making molecules or breaking molecules down. So there's some examples that we can use to explain metabolic reactions. Photosynthesis involves making glucose, so that is a metabolic reaction that's making something. Respiration does the opposite, it breaks glucose down, so that's still a metabolic reaction. Both of these are controlled by enzymes. Anything where molecules are being made, so small molecules are being converted into large molecules, like glucose being converted into starch. And anything where molecules are being used to create new, smaller molecules as well. So nitrate ions from the soil in plants are combined with the glucose from photosynthesis and they're used to make amino acids. These are small molecules, but then those small molecules can also be joined to make proteins. So there's lots of steps there that are all metabolic reactions because they involve making molecules. There are a couple of key terms involving metabolisms that we need to know and be able to explain. So metabolic waste is one of them, and metabolic rate. Metabolic waste is just waste products that are produced from metabolic reactions. Waste products are products that are gonna be potentially toxic and an issue in the body if they build up, so they need to be removed. So examples that we've already discussed are lactic acid and carbon dioxide, also urea, which is the product of breaking down proteins. The metabolic rate is the speed at which the chemical reactions are happening in the body. A better way of describing this is saying it can be measured as the number of calories or the amount of energy your body uses to maintain all your living processes when you are at rest. So when you're sitting down, not doing anything or sleeping, for example, the amount of calories and energy that your body is using to carry out all of these chemical reactions is your basic metabolic rate. There are different processes to remove metabolic wastes. So urea is made from the breakdown of amino acids in the liver. Carbon dioxide is joined with ammonium compounds, which are the product of breaking down the amino acids to make them less toxic, but this forms urea, which is still toxic if it builds up in the body. So we then transport the urea in the blood to the kidneys, where it is filtered out and then it's dissolved in water and it leaves the body as urine. Carbon dioxide. This one's probably easy and the most familiar. So it's produced by all cells through respiration. It's transported in the blood plasma to the lungs where it diffuses into the alveoli and then it will be exhaled. So lactic acid is produced through anaerobic respiration in muscle cells, as we've said. It can be transported in the blood to the liver. So we have spoke about how we can react it with oxygen and then it can fully break down. The liver can also convert excess lactic acid back into glucose, which can then react with the oxygen in order to be fully broken down. So this is actually how the lactic acid gets removed. If we don't need the glucose for respiration at that point and we don't need the energy that will be released from that reaction, then the liver can convert that glucose into glycogen and store it for when we do need the glucose. Factors that can affect your metabolic rate. If there are more reactions taking place in your body that require energy, for example, if you're building a lot of new molecules, then more respiration will be occurring to release more energy, so your metabolic rate is going to be higher. 
This is an example of how metabolic rate can be different between different people. And there's different reasons why you might require more energy in the body at different times in your life, for example, or under different circumstances. So sex, age, and growth rate can all contribute to changing metabolic rate. For example, children tend to have a higher metabolic rate than adults. Your body mass or weight can also affect your metabolic rate. And genetics can play a factor as well. So inherited genes from your parents may also affect your metabolic rate. It makes sense if we take children or a pregnant woman, for example, their metabolic rate will be higher because they are growing. So the child is growing, so they're building new molecules all the time to build new and make new cells through mitosis. And similarly, the pregnant woman is growing a new child. So there's lots of new cells and new molecules being built there. So that's going to require more energy. Therefore, the metabolic rate will be higher. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>